Hi everyone, we made a coin and stock market indicator using the TradingView library. We will make a desktop application using custom tickinter and synchronize it with the indicator codes. You can subscribe to YouTube channel for more programming projects. We can transfer the TradingView library using the keywords specified in the document in the terminal section. I transfer the files to the project with the keyword import. Usually we can use these files to create indicators. I will create a variable. I can create an indicator by sending a few parameters to the handler function. For example, let's create an indicator for shares of the Tesla company. I specify from which exchange the information will be received and its frequency with the parameter sent to the function. Using the get function, I can print all parameters sent to the function on the console screen. I want to show you all parameters in order. For example, you may need all the parameters when creating an application. Now let's print the indicator properties to the console screen. There are many parameters in the indicator function. All parameters have a meaning, but if you find it difficult to understand the displayed parameters, you can show the summary of the indicators with the summary function. Since there are too many by indicators, by is shown on the console screen as suggested. I want to warn you here, the purpose of the video is definitely not to give investment advice. The purpose of the video is to show you how you can develop applications with indicators using the Python programming language. Let's examine the parameters sent to the function a little bit. From the go to section, we can see details of the functions in the library. Here we can understand how all the functions work. If you have some time, you can check it. Let's send a few different companies to the function and check its indicators. But real apps don't work that way. Let's create a list. Let's save a few company names to the list. Using the for loop, we will display all the company names in the list in order on the screen. I am synchronizing the variable symbol. Let's specify the company name before the indicator features.
All companies in the list are shown in order. You can also display some of the information contained in the summary function on the screen. For example, let's just show the recommendation feature on the screen. Let's show the only companies that are by on the screen. We can use a simple if query for this. Only the buy ones were shown on the screen. Let's try other suggested values as well. You can also try different options in the if query. Now let's create a list containing coins. I am changing the parameter sent to the function. Not all coins are displayed on the screen due to the if query. I will run it again after removing the if query. Information about the coin is displayed in order. Let's get data from a different exchange. It is probably given an error because BNB is not available on the Coinbase exchange. Let's edit the list and run it again. Using these codes, you can make different applications that show indicators. I add the custom tick into the library to the project with import. But first, I need to transfer the custom tick into the library in the terminal section. Now I can use all the features of the library in the project. All features of the library are shown in detail on the website. I recommend that you review all details in the document. I will share the link with you in the description section. I will create the desktop window using the custom tick into the library. By using the main loop function, I make the window appear on the screen all the time. We have created an empty desktop window. We can change the appearance of the window using the set appearance and set default functions. In the go to section, we can see the function details.
you can choose one of three options as an image. We will add objects to the window shortly. Let's also see the dark feature. You can choose the view you want. I am changing the app title using the title function. You can change the app size using the geometry function. We need a frame to add objects to the application. I will use Tkinter library for frame. I can create a window with the frame function. I sync with the window using the pack function. I will create an entry object. Each parameter sent to the function represents the physical properties of the object. If you have any questions about the submitted parameters, you can specify them in the comments. I sync with desktop window using the pack function. The entry object has been added to the window. Let's create a button object with the same method. The button has been added to the desktop window, but since we haven't defined a text function, it doesn't have any function yet. Let's add a label object. I will display the indicator summary on the screen in the label object. I am adding a text function for the button.
the text function will be called each time the button is pressed. I want to show a simple example. The user will enter a text in the entry object and when the button is pressed, the text will be displayed in the label object. I am moving the menu function to the bottom of the codes. In this way, the indicator function will work as soon as the application is running. Let's run the indicator function as soon as the button is clicked. Instead of showing the indicators of the object in the list, let's show the coin indicator entered by the user in the entry object on the console screen. I will no longer use for loop. I think symbol. The app works as planned. Let's show it in the label object instead of showing it on the console screen. It is enough to just show the recommendation value on the screen. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can specify them in the comments. Also, don't forget to follow the YouTube channel for more programming projects.